Gauss's method provided us with a method for taking multiple observations of some orbiting object with respect to some observer location and figuring out the approximate position vectors of that object with respect to the center of mass of whatever it was orbiting at three different times. And we called those three final vectors the r sub i vectors. But how do we get from there to the actual orbital elements of the orbit of that object? For that, we need Gibbs method. So Gibbs method is now treating a case where we have three fully evaluated position vectors of our object with respect to the center of mass of whatever it is in orbit about at three different times. And those can either be measured directly or can be evaluated via Gauss's method or some variation of Gauss's method. We've already established that these are linearly dependent vectors, and so their weighted sum is equal to zero. If we take this expression and we cross it with each of the three vectors in turn, we will get these three sets of relationships. If we instead take this linear summation and dot it with the eccentricity vector, well, this dot product has to equal zero because the original sum equals zero. And we can also show that this dot product leads to this expression. Let's see how. Recall that E dotted into R is equal to magnitude E magnitude R times the cosine of the angle between them. We also know that R can be written as the semi-parameter of the orbit divided by one plus E cosine of nu, where nu is the true anomaly. That means that if we solve for L, we have, that is the same parameter is equal to the orbital radius magnitude plus E dotted into R, which leads to the observation E dotted into R is equal to L minus R. And therefore the dot product of this sum into E gives us these three terms, the sum of which must still equal zero. We can now pre-multiply this expression by the cross product R3 cross R1 and substitute this set of expressions in order to eliminate terms. And what that looks like is, so we've taken our linear combination of the weighted sum of our radius vectors dotted into E. We've pre-multiplied this by R3 cross R1. And now, for each of these R3 cross R1 terms, we can substitute using our previously found expressions. So for example, in one case, we can take R3 cross R1 is equal to C2 divided by C1 times R2 cross R3. Similarly, we all have R3 cross R1 is equal to C2 divided by C3 times R1 cross R2. So let's make those substitutions. Recall that this entire expression is equal to zero. So writing this all out and simplifying, we get, so we have simply grouped all of the terms in the same parameter to one side and all of the terms in the individual orbital radius magnitudes on the other side. We will call this set of vectors, the vector D, and we will call this set of vectors n. And it is now incredibly important to notice that d and n lie in the direction of r sub i cross r sub j. All of the r sub i's are coplanar, so this is the direction orthogonal to the orbital plane, which means that d is parallel to n and is parallel to h hat, the angular momentum direction. Next, we are going to cross this newly defined n vector with the eccentricity direction. And we will again make use of the fact that E dotted into R is equal to the same parameter minus the orbital radius magnitude R to make the simplification. We will factor out the same parameter and everything that remains, we will define as the new vector S. Because N and D are both parallel to H hat, N crossed with E, must be in the q hat direction, which means that s must be parallel to q hat. And this now provides us with all of the information that we need to solve for all of the geometric orbital parameters. The same parameter of the orbit is given by the ratio of the magnitude of this n vector to the d vector, 
and the eccentricity is the ratio of the magnitude of the s vector to the magnitude of the d vector. All three of these vectors, n, d, and s, are formed directly from the original measurements, r1, r2, and r3, or from calculations via Gauss's method. This method only works if all three of the vectors are coplanar. So if any one of the three measurements is not strictly coplanar of the others, the mathematics of this will break down. So that is an important first check in applying this method. It also works particularly well for large angular separations. So this is the exact opposite of Gauss's method. It works very poorly when the angular separations between the three vectors are very small because then numerical noise takes over. This method is often also combined with an initial application of Gauss's method. In essence, you use Gauss's method to get an initial cut at what the values of these things might be. You calculate the orbit and the orbital velocity based on Gibbs's method, and then you plug that result back into the next iteration of Gauss's method, and you keep going back and forth as you converge on an orbital solution.